on with drawing my authorship on a peer review journal article at PNAS 2018. So I'm Tennessee. See Leonardi, she here is in Seattle. I'm filming this over five years later on Thursday, 26 September 2024. And I'm going to talk through withdrawing my authorship on a peer reviewed journal article in approximately October 2018 that had been submitted to Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, PNAS, and not yet finished being reviewed. Yes, this was a publication. I've been working on a project for a few years and there were some problems with I had with the methodology, whether or not it was the methodology. There was like um, concerns about the method um, within our research group, but then also other people in the department who had used the method. And so I it was in the I had okay, and we I had presented at a number of conferences, both like poster and talk form, and then this other person had gone first author on this article and had submitted it to, to a few places did not actually tell me that they were submitting it to at least one of the places that they submitted it, it got rejected a number of times it was under review and I had sent a number of during the publication process um like I'd sent feedback to the person who was first author and they had not addressed some of the basic physics feedback that I was like might want to check this and they didn't do it and then between the time I saw something and it showed up in the review portal so to speak uh there they had changed my authorship without my consent they had, what removed my middle name there was like a bunch of like really kind of sketchy science which is a really big deal in science um and that I had not been told about all right and so since my I had sent emails I had talked to these people and like a lot of this remained uh, I was like, you know, I'm, I don't want to be on a publication where that's wrong, right? And my, my basic stuff has not been addressed. And so I contacted the person who was the lead author and like the person who was my advisor. So my advisor was at the University of California, Berkeley, like me. And then the other uh, person was based in Texas at a university in Texas. And so I, and I told them, I was like, I have not. I sent this and it's still under review and I did not ever get feedback on the addressing my thing my you know my authorship was changed without my note like and stuff and I was like I would like to withdraw myself as author on this you can put me in the acknowledgements because like I had done I had done a bunch of concept project conceptualization um and I had done a bunch of measurements and stuff like that and so it was kind of like yes it was very instrumental um and then and they were like, well, we can say you did less. Or he's like, well, how about I submit this? And it was like something like, um, like they were trying to, so that we had submitted like what each of us had done. And they were trying to say like I had done less than I had done. And like, I was just like, no comment on that. And so I, and I was like, um, I was like, please re remove me or request to remove me as author. And I gave them, I was like, I'll give them a couple days to do it. And it's like, it's not hard. Um, and it had been over a week and they still hadn't done anything so far as I was aware so I was like I'm just going to contact PNAS so I actually directly contacted PNAS and I was like I would I've, I've talked and emailed to these people multiple times it's been over a week have you heard anything I asked to remove myself as author and so the journal um whoever whatever position that was the some like liaison I'm going to use the term um contacted me back and we were like we have not we did not know that was going on we'll remove you um so they removed me as author and then and so that was it All right that was a um yeah that was for me i withdrew my authorship the other they had not finished going through the review process like it was still in review um and then it ended up i think they got rejected without comment after i withdrew myself as author uh, and then i think they went on and published without me and i don't I do not know actually if they put me in the acknowledgements. Um, I think every time I've done the measurements on a study or or measurements for a study or done lab work or helped with conceptualization, I've been acknowledged in papers. So if I wasn't, that would be a huge inconsistency with kind of science standard in science. So uh, I would show kind of the moral and ethical like lack thereof for the people who were in charge of that publication. Um, and so that's what happened present how do I feel about my decision now well if they didn't include me in the acknowledgements like 
we had agreed upon at that point in time. I was like, oh, step forward, um, the, or the path forward, since I had problems with um, the research that they did and they chose not to, right? I mean, the, I, what they should have done, right, was address it and then it wouldn't have been a problem, but they weren't really into accurate science, right? Uh, or getting it right. They just wanted to publish in a big thing and get a bunch of citations. And I was just kind of like, I would rather get it right, but you are not interested in that. So how do I feel now? Good. And especially if I they chose not to put me in the acknowledgement section and go, okay, now I know who to not work with in the future, right? They shut that door themselves. Um, because we had agreed on they would put me in the acknowledgement section. So in the future, any new pathways that have opened up because of my decisions? Well, first off, this is something that is exceptionally rare. Of all the people I talked to at the depart in the department I was in at the time, trying to figure out what I should do because I wasn't being listened to um, by my the person, the people I was working with on the project in the department, um, there was only one person who I talked to who, who was actually my advisor at the time, Raymond Jeanlo, and he said he had done it once for a paper, but he was like one of the lead investigators. Um, and so he, um, there was the, it's different coming from a PhD level. Right. Um, and so, okay. Um, I, did, th was that a contributing factor for why I got rejected then with no comment? I do not know. Um, right, it's concerning when the person who's done it and presented the research and done a bunch of the work, right, and made the figures like I did, um, right, there were images and pictures I took and then like did with annotations and stuff and sent off and they wanted to include in the publication. I was like, it's not really appropriate to include the publication. That's my own original work, but you know, they weren't. Um, so I hope that's going to get published, but I don't actually know. Um, so, cause that's like, well, that's theft, but, uh, but like, yeah, I hold the copyright on those images, <laughs> not them. So if I'm not an author, then can I, I technically get the, uh, the article taken down by copyright law violation? Oh yeah, the detail, but they didn't care. So I was like, it's great. Cause I still have the samples. I still have my samples. Um, so essentially the data we collected, whoa, I know, um, the data I collected and we collected is available publicly um, as part of the project and the use of the facilities we had is that it's available publicly. So they could go ahead and publish, but if their research is wrong, sucks for them because somebody like me can come along and process it and publish something, right? And I don't have to do it with them because they published without me. So I'd be that crazy, crazy lady <laughs> publishing sole author. But that's not what I aim to do. I was like, so if I did go and do like say a PhD in physics in Italy, it's the perfect set of data. I have the samples. I have um, that I analyzed anyway. And I have a lab book. I took notes for all of the sessions. I wrote down where they were. I did drawings. I did stuff like that. Um, so I know, and I thought anything went wrong during the um, collecting measurements and stuff like that. I got it written down. Um, so in addition to the stuff being available publicly, or I already backed it up onto multiple external hard drives, right? I wrote my own code, which because I didn't publish with them, they didn't need, right? So there was the software that came with the collecting the data in the first place. Um, but in my spare time, I was like, I'm interested in pure physics. So I'm gonna develop my own code to um, process the information a little bit differently to tech, like maybe look at some pure physics stuff. So like if I did a PhD in physics, say like in Italy or something like that, it's the perfect data set, could even use the software that the Beamline scientists had, right, to talk about, did I find anything interesting in physics, or did I have questions about the method, or did my advisor, right, it's a communication ground of like, this is something I've worked on in the past, could, you, could I describe it to my advisor? All right, um, so looking forward, it's not, I don't, I left the project for a reason, right? Um, I didn't necessarily, it, like it was, the cool stuff was a lot of um, like physics and material science and engineering, which isn't how the leads were taking it, but to understand it and get it right, that was kind of necessary. And they decided like, nee, we're just gonna kind of push that under the rug. And I was like, but that's what I like accuracy. Um, so it was like, it'd be a cool one to like, Maybe there was something cool in physics that in going back through it or with my own code, I found I'm like, and because the data is publicly available and because I have 
the notes and I have the badge access that shows I was there and I was on the grid I was on the experimental papers I was even experimental lead on one of those you know me in charge <laughs> um right uh I that that's already all in the documentation I could go through and publish right um but I'd say perhaps the biggest lesson so there's that right it, it allow it provides me grounds for communication with a future advisor if we wanted it as grounds for communication um the other one would be I've learned groups and especially bad advisors or principal investigators or whatever you want to call them can really just I read it in what was a nature paper they put out different personality types of bad advisors and one they termed the hijacker and that advisor was a hijacker and I was like maybe I should focus on doing like if I were to return to science focus on solo author articles and then like articles with just me and my advisor for safety and security to reduce the chances of hijacking my research getting hijacked yet again right so I was just like like a safety protocol here okay <laughs> not that every paper is gonna be a Nobel Prize paper but like just stop screwing with me <laughs> like and stealing my stuff so I'm like a safety ground because you are a two-year-old mentally you're getting cut Right. So, and maybe you're not, but like my advisor and I, if I have a good advisor, I want to pamper my advisor. So it's just me or me and my advisor, right? P pamper, 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 pamper. So it's like, right? If I get a good one, uh -huh. spoil, spoil him and or him, her and or them rotten. There we go. So that's right. Going through a bad situation would be like eye opening on the like, but if I had the chance to get it right, I would pamper that person, you know? Nine, nine first author papers, at least, you know, like on that, like that. let's go for it. So there we go. I saw with, withdrawing my authorship on a peer-reviewed journal article at PNAS 2018.